Georgetown on the road here in Notre Dame, Indiana. Georgetown is in the blue, fighting Irish in the white, blue, and gold. Hoyos with the basketball. Well, with Jaden Epps being out, I mean, this team is a very good three-point shooting team, and uh, Ed Cooley told us he needed his other seniors to play like seniors. The one advantage they have over Notre Dame is age. Supreme Cook with the miss. You mentioned Epps, Mike, missing his second straight game due to illness as Georgetown is coming off a win on Tuesday against Coppin State at home, 71-54. Well, now's the time in December you want to get people healthy. Work on the glass for the Irish looking for a second chance. Burton straight away. That's a three ball, and he's ripping the ropes for the Irish to get us rolling. You know, I thought watching practice yesterday that, uh, you know, he struggled from three early. That was, boy, that's a great mental health basket for him. Uh, only 21% on the year coming in, but he had a great look, and so many times you do on an offensive rebound. He was just two of seven from beyond the arc in the loss last Saturday at then number eight Marquette, 78 59 for Notre Dame. Styles has the hoop for the Hoyas. They're on the board. And we talked about ACC ties, and uh, we, I, you know, with Dontro Styles, I didn't know what he could do. You know, we never saw him at North Carolina. The Nancy dropping the hammer for the Irish on the strong drive. And uh, talk about not seeing him. We never really saw him at Notre Dame either in his time here. He's one of the few holdovers with uh, Matt Zona. The South Bend, Indiana native, J.R. Conezzi. With a vicious slam on that determined drive to the rim. Brumbaugh got bumped on his way to the glass. Here he is. We talked about Georgetown, not a great defensive team, and uh, late help coming in, and he just saw that lane getting wide open to the right hand. Bonesi has a couple of double doubles this season against Auburn and Oklahoma State. Went for 18 points and 11 boards against the Auburn Tigers. Brumbaugh drew the defensive attention. Masood. Deep into the shot clock with the pull-up, and he rattles it in. Well, that's what Micah Shrewsbury would like to see, long contested twos. But uh, Masood, a really good shooter. Two years in the Kansas State program, and prior to that he played in Wake Forest, as Mike mentioned, part of the ACC lineage. That's another three for the Irish, and it's Roper. You know what, and unlike Zona in, in the middle of that, he, he's really got a good assist to turnover ratio. I think he makes good decisions passing the ball from the high post. Julian Roper, who shoots 36% from he's, beyond the arc, best on the team. Yeah, no, he, he is by far their best three-point threat. Heath, looking for the kind bounce, does not get it. Kinezi pulls it down. Burton regathers and brings it up. He'll just fire away. Yeah, he, he definitely needs to be closer to the three-point line. Quick turnaround, Masu. Yeah, he's the, the thing is uh, he's a tough matchup. He's got good size. He can get his shot against most defenders out on the wing. It's just his fifth game of the season for Masu, who might pick up the foul there on the push. Had a preseason right hand injury. Masu just had that last basket. Roper had another three, second of the game for the Irish. Yeah, it's just great ball movement that time. And uh, Michael Shrewsbury talked about it. He didn't want to see a lot of dribbling unless he's attacking the basket. Seeing those three pointers fall, Mike, a good sign for the fighting Irish. Just 28% from beyond the arc. But start the afternoon. But 36% here. I mean, they are a very good shooting team here at home. Yeah, you know, they shoot 49% on their home floor. Yep. Way above their season average of 41%. Kunezi misfires. Fight on the glass. John got it for Notre Dame. Right. And, and you know what? I mean, 
They were concerned about Georgetown's ability to offensive rebound. So far, it's been Notre Dame that's been winning that battle. Jebba Jai, sophomore from Centerville, Ohio, who averages just over four points per game. Pulled that one down, put it right back up for two. Travel. That's going to be a turnover against Georgetown. So we get our first timeout. Some high flying action and some accurate shooting. Right now, it's the Irish by four. She's a thief and a con artist. You're making me blush. I'm a cop. Yeah, I'm a cop. You have a badge? Not yet. Not ever. I am now a guardian of the law. How did you get yeah. that? Wild Cards. Series premiere Wednesday, January 17th on The CW. The sci-fi future to everyday reality is AI making humans unnecessary in the workplace. And what does that mean for us here in Charlotte? Will this rapidly changing technology put you out of a job or will it make your job better? AI's impact on the Queen City. A look at the future. Tuesday on WCCB News at 10. Here's a holiday thought to ponder. Is it truly a wish list if you only have one wish? Here's to getting everything you're hoping for this season. Make your wish list a reality with exceptional offers during the season of Audi. Brian Davies and Chris Smith from Body Works Plus. Since 1998, our focus has been on excellence in auto body repair. We are excited to support the Shrine Bowl of the Carolinas and the excellence in high school football players of each state. All profits from the game are sent to the Shriners Hospital, a world-renowned healthcare facility concentrating on treating children so they may enjoy the life we all take for granted. Please join us in supporting the Shrine Bowl and the Shriners Hospital. Body Works Plus, the Metro's premier state-of-the-art auto body repair facility. Sometimes you need solutions. Alicia Brown's nonprofit offers legal services to help people keep their homes and delivers nutritious meals to seniors in need. We were invited to the Kelly Clarkson Show where I nominated Alicia for the Good Neighbor Award. This is just what you need. ACC Basketball on the CW is brought to you by Pacific Life creating financial security for more than 150 years. The Irish have the early lead. They've been successful in their home court so far this season, Mike, three and one on the young season. And this is the start of a six game homestand, isn't it though? Which is actually, and there you see and this is one of the youngest teams in the nation. So, uh, you know, this makes sense. A young team you'd think would be much more comfortable at home. And so you got six, a six-game homestand. Great to build confidence going into the league play in January. So I, I think things are, you know, things couldn't really lay out better for this team. That includes a couple of ACC games against Virginia and Duke. Turnover, Hoyas. Bristol is into the game, number 31 for Georgetown. Styles trying to drive, couldn't get the angle. Kept alive, Fielder, tough shot, he laid it in. That's, you know, the breakdown, you get the drive going to the basket, people lose the uh, block out assignments, and that's exactly what Micah Shrewsbury was worried about, the offensive glass. Good size inside. Drew Fielder, 6'10. Yeah, 3 4 5. Very tall. Fielder shoots 47% from the floor. That three out of the corner bounces off. Coach's son, Braden Shrewsbury. Fielder. They got a kind bounce there, and it fell in for the three. All of a sudden, Georgetown has taken the lead the last five points from number 20, who's just come into the game for the Hoyas. Showing what he can do inside and outside. Not a great three-point shooter at 29%. Nesney, not a, that's a, you know, one of those turnovers. 
omission just took his eyes, just a lack of concentration. So Fielder with the ball right now, Mike, averages 4.4 points per game. He's had the last five, and Masood misses the turnaround. And see, with, with a guy like Epps out, those are the type of contributions that you need in a game like this. And then Z to the rim, and he'll go to the free throw line. Chance at the old school three-point play. Here's the look, and he's, you know, here's the guy, this is his, he had the drive for the dunk, and now he gets the finish here, a chance to really show some things going to the rim. Inspired play in this first half, J.R. Clenezzi. Seven points, five boards, and the loss at Marquette with just one of eight beyond the arc, so he's decided to go inside. Had a jam earlier in this half. Thunderous jam, Mike. Yeah, I know. It was a great take. And, uh, you know, that game against Marquette was a, it was a game that got this team's attention, showed them a barometer of how, how far they had to go. They did well to try to fight back into that one, Mike. Yep. They trailed 17 to nothing to start the game against Marquette. Ultimately losing 78-59 and shot just 36% as a team. And that's a, and Marquette is a, you could argument of a Final Four team. Quick ball movement and Styles. Shrewsbury goes up for the rebound. Originally signed with Penn State, and then came here to Notre Dame. With his dad. First time his father has ever coached his son. So this has been a great experience to this point. Not going to be thrilled with the turnover. Braden Shrewsbury, the freshman, State College, Pennsylvania. And, and their last couple of turnovers have been careless more than forced by the defense. Penn State made the tournament under Coach Shrewsbury a season ago for the first time since 2011. They had a first round win against Texas A&M. And another coach with ACC ties. Come on. <laughs> Fielder, watch out. This is one where a coach <laughs> looks down. Wait a minute. This guy was down the scouting report. 3.7 points a game, 29% from three. Mike, he's already got two three-pointers. He made four all season before today. Yeah, and he's perfect from the floor. He's got eight points. <laughs> and he's not, it's not like, he's not even thinking about that shot. He's taking it. Kerry Booth was right there, and that's a 6'10 freshman. Just a little bit of daylight, enough for Fielder. Brumbaugh, dribbling clinic. A lot of dribbling into the paint from Bob. And they were talking yesterday that he's their best passer. Didn't have to pass that one off, Mike. 9.2 no. points per game for Brumbaugh. Yeah, very creative off the dribble. Jai with the handoff. Nezzi on the drive, had it stripped away Heath. To the floor, shot clock is down to five along the baseline. And foul called on the play. Booth missed the shot, and there was a scrap for the loose ball. Tries to draw the contact right there. Nobody stepped up. Everybody uh, involved with blocking out there. It was just good patience, a good take. 6'4 freshman from Washington, D.C., Rowan Brumbaugh. Yep, you know, went to Texas, redshirted there, never re has not, you know, never really played a game until coming into his freshman year at Georgetown. Career high seven rebounds to go along with 14 points in the win against Coppin State for Brumball. Three point Georgetown lead. About to cross the 12 minute threshold of our first half from Purcell Pavilion. At the Joyce Center. Davis had to send it back out. It's into the backcourt to Roper, trying to find Burton. And that'll be Georgetown basketball. So the turnover gives the ball back to the Hoyas. They've got a 16-13 lead. This is CW Courtside Saturday. Up next, we'll be your savings. 
You don't have to wait until retirement to start enjoying your second act. With protected lifetime income from Pacific Life, imagine your future with confidence. For more than 150 years, we've kept our promise to financially protect and provide, so you can look forward to leading a whole different type of team. Talk to a financial professional about life insurance and retirement solutions with Pacific Life. Surprise! Dad? Hey there, family, while you're shopping, get me a 5G phone, it's on my list. Seriously? A better plan is Verizon. They take this mess? Very much so, just trade in that old phone for a free 5G phone plus Netflix and Max. Well, we should have just done that. This didn't land, she didn't like that. Honey, I, I immediately get it. This holiday, turn any Samsung phone in any condition into a Galaxy S23 Plus on us. And now add Netflix and Max to your plan for just $10 a month. Save big this holiday, only on Verizon. Is your car's plastic trim faded and milky? Don't worry. Cerakote's ceramic trim coat restores oxidized trim effortlessly. Just wipe it on. It's guaranteed for 200 washes. Even dust won't stick to it. Keep your car looking professional. Selling your oxidized faded trim car? Detailed cars sell for way more than faded cars. Read the thousands of five-star reviews for yourself. Buy any of Cerakote's number one selling ceramic products for under $20 at these leading retailers today. We need some help. I know. I'm going to CashNetUSA.com. And if approved, we can have the money in our account as soon as the same business day. Go to CashNetUSA.com to apply for the money you need. This is the 30th all-time meeting between the program. It started back in 1948. In January of 1974, a big win for the Irish against John Thompson's Hoyas. 89, Mike, a win for Georgetown. Long-time Big East members and rivals, and this is the first time they meet in different conferences. And uh, Digger Phelps, who is here today, chance to chat with, uh, coached in those two middle meetings, going one and one in those games. Game in 2013 was in January of that year, and a win for Georgetown here at Notre Dame, 63-47. And uh, before that uh, timeout, uh, Michael Shrewsbury announced that and, uh, great take inside by Supreme Cook. It's a pretty tough name to live, first name to live up to. <laughs> One of the best names in all of college basketball. Yeah, absolutely. Hook but is the leading rebounder for this Georgetown team. Another three for the Irish. How about Booth? And I was looking at it. And at 6'10", most of his shots have been from behind the arc. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about it, why? And it, but he has a great stroke, not a great percentage. That screen by Cook results in a foul against Supreme Cook. Right now, sitting at 29%, but he gets a terrific look, a late closeout, good little screen. It's like 31 of his 49 attempts coming in were from behind the arc. He had originally signed with Penn State as well, headed to that Micah Shrewsbury bench. Came with coach here to Notre Dame. His dad, Calvin, the 1998 Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year at Penn State. He's the current general manager for the Denver Nuggets. With a, with a ring? Yeah. Things worked out well last season. Yeah, I would say so. Nikola Jokic uh, is one of the most unique players I've seen in the NBA. Heath will run it up for Georgetown after the miss. Hesitation. Tried to put it up on the rim, created some contact. Jamie Lucky, James Breeding, Clarence Armstrong in charge of the festivities this afternoon is our officiating crew. So Heath will go to the free throw line. No real shot blocker out there right now for Notre Dame, and uh, Heath did a nice job just advancing the ball. Nobody really stopped the ball and uh, drew the contact. 68% from the line for Heath. CW Courtside Saturday returns in two weeks. An exciting doubleheader first, a pivotal ACC matchup. Pitt takes on Syracuse. 
Then to Durham is number 21. Duke welcomes Queens University to Cameron Indoor Stadium. CW Courtside Saturday. Returns December 30th, 12 Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, only on the CW. Queens from my adopted hometown yes. in Charlotte, North Carolina. Look forward to uh, to that. Enjoy Both of us enjoy the Christmas holiday. This is game two of our doubleheader. Most of you, we hope, watched Miami, number 24 in the nation, defeat LaSalle, 84-77. Wilga Poplar had 25 points for the Canes. We're seeing some players step up who have been in supporting roles but are making some big-time shots. Fielders come off the bench for Georgetown, missed made every shot so far. That includes a couple of three-pointers. He's also pulled down three boards. Yeah, Brumbaugh. Kinesny with seven now. There's a bump on Fielder. So Kinesny picks up the foul. You look at the pace of the game right now, it's more falling into Georgetown's pace than the way that they're scoring the ball. They were the one that's probably feeling more comfortable. Fielder again. This time it's a miss from beyond the arc. First missed shot of the game. Burton crossing it over by Fielder. Trying to switch hands in midair. Too much on it. Yeah, Back to Georgetown. You're going to have to be pretty quick to stay in front of him. He is so fast, Tom. Fielder and Konezny fighting for that one. That's going to go back to the Fighting Irish. Yeah, it, you know, if Burton has you with a live, dri live dribble isolated on the wing, you have to turn around and yell for help, basically. Notre Dame attempted 35 three-pointers in the loss at Marquette. That's a season high. They will shoot the three as we go inside of nine minutes to go in our first half with Burton on the dribble. Which I think for this team right now is too many. I, I really think they should build inside out. Uh, they just don't have the, the players that are capable of making those shots. Unable to make the play on the baseline and the ball goes back to Georgetown. And part of that is, you know, maybe not creating easy enough offense. You know, if they're playing in the half court, I'm sure the teams are, are packing it in against them, just daring them to make shots. Masood, his three came up short. Styles got it back. And the arrow will favor Georgetown on the hell ball situation. Georgetown is not shy about shooting the three either. They average nine made threes per game, third best in the Big East. Matumbo had to give it up to Heath. The former Boston College Eagle inside to Masood. He missed the layup. I, I think he was so stunned at how open he was. I mean, that, that was... That was as easy a shot as he's going to get this afternoon. Great look by Heath to find Masood. Burton in traffic. And that's deflected out of bounds by Styles. You know, Ryan Matumbo, like his father, is traffic all by himself. <laughs> Seven foot two, 259 pounds for the junior from Atlanta, Georgia. Seeing action in his eighth game this season. Hoyas are six and four so far this year. Just one true road game. A loss for Georgetown on the road. Deep into the shot clock. Roper misses everything. And Matumbo has it. That's now three of ten on three-point attempts for Notre Dame. And there was still some that that was there's still five seconds to go. Burton's gonna get picked. 
he'll get the foul on the bump on the play. So Georgetown maintains the two point lead. CW courtside Saturday. South Bend. In two weeks, CW courtside Saturday returns with a can't miss doubleheader. Dropping the hammer. What a finish. The look out. CW courtside Saturday. It all tips off December 30th. Does the Shriners Hospital mean to the patients? Shriners is a safe place. Shriners is a place of growth and recovery. Shriners helps patients read something they never could have. Shriners help patients get their future back. Shriners give a sense of hope. Join us at the Shrine Bowl, proudly sponsored by Scott Clark. Hi, Roddy Player here with Queen City Audio, Video, and Appliances, the largest independent appliance retailer serving the Carolinas for over 70 years. At Queen City, we're here to serve you with over $25 million of local inventory of the industry's top-selling appliances, electronics, mattresses, grills, and more. With special financing and same-day or next-day delivery, nobody gets it to you faster. Come see why Queen City's been voted Charlotte's best appliance store year after year. Visit one of our 10 locations or find us at queencityonline.com. Here's a holiday thought to ponder. Is it truly a wish list if you only have one wish? Here's to getting everything you're hoping for this season. Make your wish list a reality with exceptional offers during the season of Audi. The 30th, it's a CW Sports Showdown when the 8-4 Wyoming Cowboys take on the 11-2 Toledo Rockets in the Barstool Sports Arizona Bowl, Saturday, December 30th at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. Well, Fridays are magical with an all-new episode of Penn & Teller Fool Us, starring Penn Gillette Teller and new host Brooke Burke. Fridays, 8, 7 Central only on the CW. Both of these teams with first year head coaches looking for the magic this season, Mike, trying to find some identity for their teams early on, getting prepped up and ready for the full conference slate. With Micah Shrewsbury and Ed Cooley. For Micah Shrewsbury, he's an Indiana guy. Um, you know, had things really going in the right direction at Penn State, although the Big Ten is about to look dramatically different next year. USC, UCLA coming in. Um, it's it's going to look a lot different than it is this year. And and he said, he actually said this was actually a pretty easy decision to make. Masood. Out. It'll bounce out of bounds in the midst of Georgetown. He missed an easy layup early and then an air ball there. And he's got too good a stroke to, to do that. And he's now two of six in the game. Georgetown, in fact, has missed its last five shot attempts. Hadn't scored in over three minutes. Shrewsbury turns and fires, and Masood pulls it down. Let's see what's happening is that he's only taken two free throw attempts on the year. And teams are just flying at Braden Shrewsbury, just daring him to drive, and it's getting tougher and tougher looks at the basket. Jai picked up the foul on this play with Heath on the move. There's the look. I mean, that's what, you know, as a player, you can't get locked into one thing. And, you know, you have to at least have the threat of the drive to set up your shot. Tuesday on Inside the NFL, nobody breaks down games like our crew with highlights and analysis you won't find anywhere else. This week, the guys take a look back at the Cowboys' big road contest against the Bills. Inside the NFL, Tuesday, 8-7 Central only on the CW. What do you think? This is Cowboys, think this is their it's a year. Oh, Dak looks pretty good. Yeah. He's always talking about Eagles and Chiefs. Certainly not Patriots this season, Mike. No. Much as that and, pains me. And I hate it. I hate it that people are starting to kill Belichick. I mean, the guy is... One of the greatest of all time. He did pretty I mean, well. Just let him 
you, you know, let him be and <laughs> just wants to go off quietly. Let him do it. It's a whole other show right there, Mike. That's a show. Because <laughs> it's on TV like the CW Courtside Saturday. We're inside of 10 on the shot clock for Zona. Looking for a safety valve. Roper slides down, maintains the dribble, Globetrotter style, and fires away! Wow, talk about the resurrection of a possession. <laughs> Julian Roper. That was borderline mm -hmm. trick shot. Yeah, that was, uh, that was, that was Marcus Haynes, uh, Globetrotter-ish. He's got five points. Heath drops it to Fielder, aggressively to the rim. Davis pulls it in, and here's Shrewsbury. Trying to cross it over against the defender, and Shrewsbury lays it up and in for the Fighting Irish to take the lead. That's what I'd like to see him doing more of, and probably should have gotten a call on the play, too. Great size, long arms, tack the rim, build your offense inside out. So whistle underneath and a foul. There you go. This is playing against the Washington Generals, not the Georgetown Hoyas. Back up, knock down a three. Do you even remember the Washington Generals? Absolutely. The Their right. record is not good, Mike. No, it's not good. <laughs> but, but they get paid. <laughs> How about road trips? Those are some road trips. Uh, yes. So Styles is headed to the free throw line. Julian Roper, we told you he's the best three-point shooter by percentage and a transfer from Northwestern. With Don Trez Styles at the free throw line. Played two years at North Carolina, appeared in 45 games. First year at Georgetown. Game high 19 points in the win against Coppin State for Styles. And he, he emphasized athlete, but um, Ed Cooley says the best athlete he's ever seen out on the floor. He said he does things, some things that just leave him speechless. Four points now for Styles after the free throws. Shrewsbury. Burton lines it up. Volleyballed around. Fielder hit it for Georgetown and ended up going off of Roper. And see, the problem, too, at his size, he can be bothered by a, lot, a larger defender from farther away. You can close out on him and, and disrupt his shot a little bit more. So Fielder is the leading scorer with eight points for Georgetown. In fact, that leads everybody. He's also got three rebounds and is two of three on three-point tries. He'd only made four all season prior to today. Turnover, Roper. Trying to get by Fielder against three defenders. How did that go in? Tell me how, G-Man. First he does the slide and get up three. I thought he was going to dump it off to somebody. Michael Shrewsbury is just like walking around going, wait, what did I just see? The crowd is just now reacting to it. Stunned. Fielder lost the handle. Here he is again. Roper on the run with Burton. Finds Shrewsbury. Burton out of the corner. He spins it off the top of the backboard. Zona got it. And he lays it in. Timeout. Georgetown. Irish by three. This is just great defense. Watch the hands right here. Good active hands, and this, I'll let this one play out. Four defenders around him for Roper. That defied the laws of physics. <laughs> and gravity, for that matter. <laughs> Maybe that's all part of it, actually. I mean, my, yeah. I just, you know, I for what he's done so far. This crowd was, you know, looking for something to ignite itself. And it's. And don't forget, like 30 seconds before that, he slid on the court. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Purpose. You know, but right. I mean, he's made two electric plays in this game. Kept the dribble alive, hit the shot, and then spun it off the backboard with four defenders around him. 
By the way, Georgetown has not made a field goal in over seven minutes. Now, the good news is they only trail by three. Coach Cooley, to put it mildly, Mike, in our discussion with him before the game, he wants a little more intensity out of his guys. And he says they're going to grow into that, just taking a little while, that's all. He wants some grit. Heath, the veteran player, misses. And, and probably, you know, when in that possession, it's probably not the shot you want. Probably want something attacking the basket, maybe get a call. So Burton, Mike, just has three points so far as the leading scorer for Notre Dame. He's the top freshman scorer in the conference. Oh, what a bounce for Shrewsbury, and it's a three ball. Yeah, you know what? When he rose up, my initial thought to myself was, eh, I don't know about that, but uh, gets the good hit because the friendly roll. Well beyond 22 feet one and three quarter inches away. That's a baseline jumper for Bristol. And Georgetown needed it. Wayne Bristol, who averages just over five points per game for the junior from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. The kick to the corner around the perimeter. Davis tees it up. Nothing but net for Davis and another three-pointer. You know, coming off a of made three, that was a nice extra pass by Shrewsbury. He could have he said, you know, I'm feeling a little bit. I might take this. But he gave it up for a better look. Six made threes in the first half of the Irish and a steal. Burton. Shovels it to Shrewsbury. Davis trying to get position. And how about this? Four, uh, one against four, and he comes up with the offensive rebound. Great, great play. And the foul was on Georgetown and Bristol. Fighting for the rebound. The Irish unselfish passing, and it results in a three. Some days I cover up because of my moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now I feel free to bare my skin thanks to Sky Rizzy. I'm celebrating my clear skin my way. With Sky Rizzy, three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. In another study, most people had 90% clearer skin even at five years. And Sky Rizzy? is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine, or plan to. Thanks to Clear Skin with Sky Rizzy, this is my moment. There's nothing on my skin, and that means everything. Now's the time. Ask your doctor about Sky Rizzy, the number one dermatologist prescribed biologic in psoriasis. Learn how Abvi could help you save. Whoa, the new iPhone 15. With that amazing camera, I wish my family had them. Zoe, you're an action star. Take action. Join T-Mobile and get four new iPhone 15s on them and four lines for 25 bucks a line. With that camera, I'll be sharing pics from the slopes. You do not want to see yourself skiing. Yeah, I'm good at skiing. Your stunt woman is. This holiday at T-Mobile, get four new iPhone 15s on us and four lines of unlimited for 25 bucks a line. What do you think of the jacket? You look like a marshmallow. This is Georgetown, a place of passion and hard work. To be a Hoya, it takes your all. Mind, heart, a pursuit for excellence. We seek out the best in one another and ourselves. Determined to learn. Determined to succeed. Determined to have an impact on and off the field. A calling to reach higher than you ever thought possible. Working as hard in the classroom as we do in the weight room. A community rooted in Jesuit tradition. DC is our training ground. The world is our arena. Together, we are strong. We are Georgetown. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary presented by Pacific Life, creating financial security for more than 150 years. Julian Roper for the Irish leads a mic with eight points. Well, and it's not the total, it's how they were scored. <laughs> and, you know, in fairness, the students are did this last week was exams, and they're gone on break. It was a kind of a sleepy crowd, 2.15 Saturday afternoon. 
but those two plays electrify the crowd, and now this place is into the game. So, uh, you know, you look at the number, all right, great, eight points in the first half, but uh, he really got things going inside. A couple of three-pointers. He's made two of the six Notre Dame three-pointers. Fielder leads the way across the way for Georgetown. And we thought that that stat line was something that Georgetown would win, the three-point line. As a team, the Irish 48% shooting in this first half. Here's Burton, the pull-up, the mid-range. And that's a, again, that's a tough matchup for Burton with uh, Masood on him, who's got the size advantage and can defend him. But uh, good, and I think that's a good, good range for him, good mid-range jump shot. Notre Dame played Niagara in its first game of the season. Burton had 29 points, a freshman school record. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> we're, we're glad you picked us. 12-2 run for Notre Dame. Defensive pressure out of bounds and back to the Irish. Uh, uh. Well, here's the look. And you see, right? I mean, he's isolated. And this is a great, you know, to give him that freedom. He is a tough cover. You got to respect his ability to drive. But the thing that's changed all this for Notre Dame is on the defensive end. And that's just not a good shot at this point. Way beyond the line for Burton. It results in a run out for Heath, and then Burton fouls him. You see, you surprise your team. There's no defensive transition, and you pick up. You take a bad shot, and you pick up a foul. And those are those are the growing pains that you have with a freshman point guard. And Mike Shrewsbury is going to have a talk with him at this point. Second foul on Burton with Heath at the free throw line. Coming up on the Subaru halftime report from Notre Dame, Indiana. We'll recap game one of our doubleheader. Go around the ACC and give you the highlights and stats. Although we just showed you what Roper has done in this first half. And that, that was a highlight package in itself. But I, but I was going to say the... The difference in this stretch is on the defensive end of the floor. That, my, uh, that Notre Dame is causing turnovers. They're getting deflections. They're getting out on the open floor, getting to the either to the basket or they're kicking out and getting shots. They haven't had to do a lot in the half court. Jai looking to give it up and put it on the floor. Roper down the lane into fielder too strong. Jai couldn't grab it and here comes Heath. Got it right back from Fielder. Minute and a half to go in our rapidly paced first half. Oh, what a move by Heath to lay it in. Help defense was a little late getting there, but that was a good quick take by Heath. How about Jay Heath, Mike, playing in his 111th career game? Well, he's, you know, Ed Cooley in his first year, he's got some experience on that team. Heath's a transfer from Arizona State and played two years prior to that. In the ACC at Boston College. Shrewsbury. Benesny. Nice defensive half court possession for Georgetown. A good cover up, good closeout on that jump shot. That was knocked out of bounds by Jai. It'll stay at this end of the floor for the Hoyas. Trailing by five. Cam Baco comes into the game. 6-3 grad guard from Hampton, Virginia. Played the last two years at Western Carolina in the Southern Conference. Got to keep track of all the travels of the players these days in college athletics, for that matter. <laughs> the schools as well as the players. And why not try to find a suitable setting yep. for your talents? Fielder. Fighting with Konezny, that's a couple number 20s. And COVID had such a big role in that time and where guys could play and now the extra year and uh, being able to play immediately and transferring within the conference. Notre Dame losing so many players from last year's team. Masood catch and release for three for the Hoyas. And that's, that's why when he shoots an air ball, it's so stunning to me because he's got a great shot. Nice little comeback here at the trail end of the half by Georgetown to cut the lead to two after the Masood three-pointer.
good screen. He gets caught up in an, you know, a direct pass to an open three, and then that's just a little bit too easy. Third made three on nine tries by the Hoyas in this first half. But with only the screener and that guy on the side of the floor, there's nobody else to help. The only thing you can do is that, you know, maybe on the inbounder shade that side. No field goals in the last two minutes and 19 seconds for Notre Dame was sued in the middle of that Georgetown huddle. It's been, kind of, it's been a kind of streaky half for both teams. Absolutely. The suit had a huge game, Mike, against TCU. 16 points, a career high, 10 rebounds for his first career double double. But the outcome in that game against TCU, how about a buzzer beater from Emmanuel Miller, who actually stepped out of bounds? But that part of the play not reviewable. And so the three pointer counted. And Georgetown lost to TCU by a point, 84 83, on December 2nd. And he's been the leader for this team. Ed Cooley has kind of relied on him to take over that role. So the shot clock is off. 15 seconds to go in the half. Burton on the dribble. See if they can give him some room to create some havoc in the middle of the floor. Five points in the first half for Burton. Trying to beat the horn. Bounces off. So the miss at the end of the half for Marcus Burton. The Fighting Irish will go to the locker room with the lead, 35-33. Having the second half becomes a factor, and I think part of that is because Notre Dame, you know, settling for those jump shots, settling for threes, and an early foul, illegal screen. But that's what happens when you know when you're shooting threes, you're settling for jump shots. You don't put any pressure on the other team to defend. You don't get them in the bonus. They don't force. You know you don't get in the bonus. Benesny picked up his first personal foul. Now Zona defending Supreme Cook. Two quick ones on him. And that's just, again, that's too easy of a pass from up top. You've got to have more ball pressure there. Cook did not go to the line in the first half. Shoots 53% from the strike. And he's a guy who's dangerous if he catches the ball, both feet in the paint. And uh, he, was, he was really quiet in the first half. Only two points. Guy averages double figures for him. Just two rebounds as well for Cook, who is the leading rebounder and second in the conference. Over eight and a half per game for the Hoyas. Number 24 in blue. Kick to the corner, Konezny. Weak side, Zona preserving the possession. Right to Burton. He's wide open. Halfway down and out. Brumbaugh leaning into a three. Hook came over the top. Foul is called. That's Zona again, Mike. No, I think it was on Burton. Oh, again, on Burton. Three in about <laughs> three and 53 seconds. So Keba Jai is at the scorer's table. Cook is at the free throw line again. 6'9", senior from East Orange, New Jersey. First year in the Georgetown program. Transfer from Fairfield. Played three years there, and now Zona leads the game. But see, here's the thing, Tom. I mean, we're, we're 53 seconds into the second half. They've already got three team fouls. Four more. <laughs> You're shooting free throws for the rest of the game. So Cook ties us, 35 all. Irish have lost three of their last four games. And that's a foul on contact inside. Cook was down low. Third foul on Cook. A lot of whistles to start this second half, tied at 35. 
Burton on the inbounds. Knocked away by Cook, who was defending it. It rolls out of bounds, and that is Georgetown ball. Well, and that's, you know, it, when you have when you have Burton taking the ball out of bounds at 5'10", and you have a bigger player on him, uh, that's an issue. Brumbaugh trying to work off the Cook screen. Got it to him. Power dribble turned right into Jai. Brumbaugh's shot was deflected and Jai grabbed it. Konezny. Davis, the sophomore from Indianapolis, Indiana. Spent last year at Seton Hall before transferring to the Notre Dame program. Spins into the paint, got the defender in the air. Konezny. So far in this game, and he and Burton have been the best off the dribble attacking the basket. Seven points in the first half for Kunesky. He's got those two. Brumbaugh sends it right back out to Styles, teeing up the three. You know, I, watching him in this game, I, I don't know why he had such trouble finding the court against in North Carolina. Spent two years in the Tar Heel program. So I actually did 45 games from Kinston, North Carolina. Just made that three-pointer for the Hoyas. Burton, sharp angle, elevates. And Heath got a piece of it in midair, mind you. And the ball goes out of bounds to Notre Dame. There's the look. And then, you know, the coaching staff was talking about Brumbaugh and his ability to find guys. Again, you know, just penetrated, broke things down into the middle and knew where his shooters were. Burton crossed it over in front of his defender, couldn't finish off the play. And now Heath comes out of the pack. Heath hesitation and drive. Oh, that's a veteran move, Mike. And the hesitation on Burton, too, made him stand up and got by him. That's some battle at the point guard position. And Georgetown, which trailed by two at halftime, has taken the early second half lead. Heath all the way to the rack. Hoyas by three. Whoa, the new iPhone 15. With that amazing camera, I wish my family had them. Zoe, you're an action star. Take action. Join T-Mobile and get four new iPhone 15s on them and four lines for 25 bucks a line. With that camera, I'll be sharing pics from the slopes. You do not want to see yourself skiing. Yeah, I'm good at skiing. Your stunt woman is. This holiday at T-Mobile, get four new iPhone 15s on us and four lines of unlimited for 25 bucks a line. What do you think of the jacket? You look like a marshmallow. Some days I cover up because of my moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now I feel free to bare my skin thanks to Sky Rizzi. I'm celebrating my clear skin my way. With Sky Rizzi, three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. In another study, most people had 90% clearer skin even at five years. And Sky Rizzi is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine, or plan to. Thanks to clearer skin with Sky Rizzi, this is my moment. There's nothing on my skin, and that means everything. Now's the time. Ask your doctor about Sky Rizzi, the number one dermatologist prescribed biologic in psoriasis. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. What should we do? I'm going to CashNetUSA.com. I can apply in minutes, and if approved, we can have the money as soon as the same business day. Go to CashNetUSA.com to apply for the money you need. Hill honors sleighs. Points for a free stay? Yes, please. All these perks. We're sliving. When you want the celebrity treatment, no matter who you are, that's hot. It matters where you stay. Hilton honors. Hilton for the stay. <laughs> well, Saturday, December 30th, the Barstool Arizona Bowl is coming to the CW. Catch all the action as the high-flying Toledo Rockets face the rugged Wyoming Cowboys.
the 2023 Barstool Arizona Bowl. Toledo versus Wyoming, Saturday, December 30th, 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, only on the CW. Folks here in South Bend are looking forward to the Sun Bowl, Mike, December 29th. The Irish will take on Oregon State. And uh, during basketball season, that becomes the iconic three points Jesus <laughs> instead of well touch, said touchdown Jesus you mean the word of life mural yes here on campus it's a miss from Shrewsbury Georgetown four of 12 for three pointers six of 21 for the Irish in the game Heath wants a three side rim cook Right back out to Masood for a three. And Cook did the heavy lifting on that possession. All Notre Dame rebounders buried too far into the paint that time on the initial three-point shot. You've got to, long shots, you're going to long rebounds. You're going to have to get some separation. Masood is into double digits. He's got 10. After making three three-pointers against Coppin State for his nine points. And the most recent win for Georgetown. That'll be a reach in foul. It's good hard work on the backboard by Cook. You know, you look at, at Cook, I mean, he's, he's averaging eight, eight plus rebounds a game, but 37 offensive rebounds and 49 defensive rebounds. So he does it on both ends of the floor. So Nesney with the turnaround and that interrupts an 8 0 run by Georgetown. Over the last one minute and 23 seconds. Uh, and you know, I mean, he for this game, uh, he's been their go to guy. I think he's the guy you got to find during this stretch. Keep him going. First player for the Irish to get to double digits with 11. Brumbaugh, the kick from E, and the three from Brumbaugh. Uh, I tell you what, you know, it, <laughs> Ed Cooley's done a lot through the portal. Um, but that's a pretty nice find as, uh, from, from, as a freshman. Five points for Brumbaugh on his 10th made three of the season. Big bucket. Seven-point advantage, Georgetown, after trailing by two at halftime. Konezny beyond the arc. Cook the rebound, Brumbaugh. Where it was there early on, no offensive rebounding for Notre Dame. Styles to Cook for the jam. Double fisted rim rocker for Supreme. Georgetown size is starting to take over in this game. Cook now with six points. Getting awfully quiet in the building for the Irish. Burton trying to spark him. Too strong. Jai got tangled up with Brumbaugh. Masood out of the corner to the rim. Konezny met him in midair. Second chance spins off the rim. At the other end for three out of the corner, and that's a miss. See, Roper. again, that's a shot, Tom. You're struggling offensively. You don't have anything back. And it's a quick three. You really need to get something going to the basket. You need a better shot than that. 13 to 2 run for Georgetown. Last three and a half minutes. Shot clock down to three. Brumbaugh. He doesn't know it. He didn't get it away in time. Shot clock violation. Despite that violation, Georgetown up to the 48-39 lead. Brumbaugh on target from long distance. And then Supreme Cook hammers it. Hello. I wish I was a little bit smaller. A mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop at Big and Tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. So light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. 
Some days I cover up because of my moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now I feel free to bare my skin thanks to Sky Rizzy. I'm celebrating my queer skin my way. With Sky Rizzy, three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. In another study, most people had 90% clearer skin even at five years. And Sky Rizzy is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine, or plan to. Thanks to clearer skin with Sky Rizzy, this is my moment. There's nothing on my skin, and that means everything. Now's the time. Ask your doctor about Sky Rizzy, the number one dermatologist prescribed biologic in psoriasis. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. Surprise. Dad? Hey there, family. While you're shopping, get me a 5G phone. It's on my list. Seriously? A better plan is Verizon. They take this mess? Very much so. Just trade in that old phone for a free 5G phone plus Netflix and Max. Well, we should have just done that. This didn't land. She didn't like that. Honey, I, I immediately get it. This holiday, turn any Samsung phone in any condition into a Galaxy S23 Plus on us. And now add Netflix and Max to your plan for just $10 a month. Save big this holiday, only on... Well, as the season goes along, we'll have nine straight Sundays of ACC women's basketball, and it starts on December 31st. Some of the headlines, including that game, Clemson and North Carolina, one of the ranked teams, seven of those in the women's rankings. That includes number three, NC State, which started outside of the top 25 for Westmore's team. Some impressive wins, including a victory against Connecticut and the defending champs, at the ACC tournament led by Elizabeth Kitley, Georgia Amor, Virginia Tech, and Kenny Brooks. What a job he's done with that program. That's all coming up, nine straight weeks. And for Notre Dame, we'll be here for a game here at Purcell Pavilion as well as the season progressive. The statue of Muffet McGraw to be unveiled on the Notre Dame campus. So a lot of things happening on CW Courtside Saturday with our women's schedule of ACC basketball. Notre Dame has not scored in the last two minutes and 17 seconds and counting. Georgetown's up to its largest lead of the game. Burton slams on the brakes. Tay Davis spinning in the paint. There's no angle there and well defended, Mike. Yeah, and they're giving, uh, they're giving a lot of room out on the perimeter. Traveling violation, Styles. I would think as this game goes along, Georgetown is going to give them five, six feet uh, from range, dare them to beat, beat them over the top. Booth. Booth hits another three. Had one of the first. Comes out firing here in the second half. Their first made three in the second half. Seven of 24 on threes for Notre Dame. The alley-oop attempt goes flying out of bounds. Here's the look. You see Masood got, uh, he was like a quarterback that looks a cornerback off with, uh, with his eyes and got his teammate a great clean look. Second made three for Booth. And Booth out there because Zona gets into the Earl that foul trouble with the three quick fouls. So Jai couldn't handle the pass from Shrewsbury. Uh, kind of a careless foul or kind of careless pass. Fielder had a big first half for the Hoyas. Wants it back. Wants to launch a three, hoists it high, and hits it. They're in a contested shot. I mean, you really can't fault the defense that time, but you got a guy who's seeing a big basket. Who, that, that, you know, that ability probably wasn't in the scouting report. How about 11 points now for Fielder? Could not defend the shot by Burton.
So Burton, the leading scorer and top freshman scorer in the ACC, comes right back with a bucket out of Penn High School. Masood, long distance. Knocked around, taken by Booth. Still, Georgetown four of eight from three-point distance this half. Despite the miss by Masood. Burton over Brumbaugh. Weak side tap, Jai. He got tangled up with Fielder. So Fielder, who just picked up the foul, is also knocking down the shots. He's got 11 points for the Georgetown Hoyas. So She's a thief and a con artist. You're making me blush. I'm a cop. Yeah, I'm a cop. You have a badge? Not yet. Not ever. I am now a guardian of the law. How did you get yeah. that? Wild Cards, series premiere Wednesday, January 17th on The CW. Here's a holiday thought to ponder. Is it truly a wish list if you only have one wish? Here's to getting everything you're hoping for this season. Make your wish list a reality with exceptional offers during the season of Audi. Happy Holidays from Christmas K104.7. It's the most wonderful time. 100% Christmas music. Christmas K104.7. At Andy Lewis Heating and Air, we do comfort one way. That's your way. We aren't here to sell you products and services you don't need. Our technicians and installers are passionate about delivering fully individualized services that meet your needs. If it's heat, air, or just a simple repair, give us a call and we'll be there. On the next Lately with Natalie and Jonathan Stewart. I am a dad, chef and owner of Restaurant Constance. I named it after my daughter for decades. I've struggled with addiction. Restaurant Constance being a tribute to your daughter, we got a chance to talk with her and she had a little video. I definitely was scared for you. You should look back and be happy. You've taken your story and you're changing other people's lives. And this is kind of my uh, part of my service. You will be inspired. Tonight at 7 on WCCB. The city is in an uproar. Catch an all-new episode of The Chosen this Sunday, December 17th, 8, 7 central on The CW. Great show. Fabulous. I started watching The Swarm this season, Mike, the ecological thriller. That, mm -hmm. was, that was fun. F-Boy Island got some popularity yep. during the course of the season. We had a great year, by the way, on the football side of things. On the CW, first year with ACC football, we had some thrillers during the course of the year. Actually, we started out basketball with a thriller with Georgia Tech winning at home against Duke. Yeah, Damon Stoudemire had a uh, welcome, good welcome to the ACC. Stoudemire's team. Mike, this just in. An overtime victory against Penn State, 82-81. And again, and you know, this we're we're 30 minutes into this game, just about, and only one free throw attempt for Notre Dame. And again, a, a long early jump shot coming out of that timeout. Brumball on the drive could not get around his defender, and then lost the ball. About Davis defensively. Yeah, this is just good, solid defense, just leading him, and uh, Rumbaugh dribbled himself into trouble. Some freshman point guards out there making mistakes that, as a head coach, you may have to live with. 40% shooting in the game for the Irish. Burton. Well, they've just built a wall, and then Burton trying to get inside, but uh, just tough for him to find any room to finish. Rumbaugh 
Turn into a double and triple team help from Burton collapsing down. About to cross the 10 minute mark here in our second half as Styles came up short. Shrewsbury runs it up. Threads the pass to Roper. Up and under, not enough. We're running up and down the court. Bristol fires three, both sides of the rim. Both teams look like tired fighters that are throwing punches that aren't landing. Seven point lead for Georgetown after trailing by two at halftime. Burton down the lane. We're just talking about free throw attempts, of which Notre Dame had one. And now Burton will go to the free throw line. There it is, all he's been seeing. It's just that, that little the, the jump stop allows him to get body contact. And maybe, Tom, this is where, you know, he can get a little bit of rhythm in this game. Uh, it's just been a struggle. He's 86% from the line, which is great, which is what you want from your point guard. But 3 of 14, 1 of 5 so far in the contest. Konezny comes in, Davis to the bench for Coach Shrewsbury. Yeah, he, needs, he needs some scoring out on the floor, and Konezny is his most reliable one in the game. Burton is reliable from the free throw line, has both 86% of the season and ninth best in the ACC. He's up to nine points for Marcus Burton, the freshman. Rumble, I'll take it all the way. Yeah, that was kind of, he was looking around to make a pass, and all of a sudden he said, oh, no, maybe I'll give this a shot. Seven points now for Brumbaugh. Yeah, he's sneaky quick, too. Shrewsbury, turnaround. Konezny with an awkward tip. Brumbaugh wants to slow the pace a little bit. Bristol driving against Booth, who held his ground. Burton. Shrewsbury let the defender go on by. Found the open man, Booth. Right to Styles. And the uh, third base coach, Ed Cooley, puts up the stop sign, and uh, they're going to run some clock. Irish struggling from the floor over the last three minutes, Mike. Two of their last 13 in field goal attempts. Masood, Fielder had it knocked away and a foul is called. Burton reaching in to knock it away. Usually in, when the ball goes straight down, you get the, the indication of getting more ball than anything. So that's the fourth personal foul on Burton with Fielder at the free throw line. First attempts in the game for Fielder. So Burton will come out and uh, Braden Shrewsbury will more than likely run some point. Either him or Roper. Nine points for Burton. Three of 14 shooting. One of five from beyond the arc for Burton to the bench. 13 points now for Fielder. Mind you, Mike, he averages 4.4 points per game for the freshman from Boise, Idaho. That is a new season high for Fielder as well. Benesny got cut off, defending by Masood. Shot clock inside of 10. Shrewsbury, nice touch on the shot. Yep, again, I'll, I'll repeat it and say that's what I'd like to see him doing more. He's, and I've seen him make a conscious effort to ball fake on his shot, get in and shoot the little mid-range floater. But he's got seven points. That includes one of five on three-point tries. Brumbaugh trying to find Fielder in a congested area, knocked away. Shrewsbury stops and hits a three. See, maybe just the building up of the confidence off that floater on the prior shot gives him a little bit more to take that three. Ten points for Shrewsbury to make it a four-point game. 
Nobody makes more, nobody takes more threes on this Irish roster than Braden Shrewsbury. Styles. Foul on the play. So Braden Shrewsbury, second double digit score of the game for Notre Dame with the three pointer for the Irish. Some days I cover up because of my moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now I feel free to bare my skin thanks to Sky Rizzi. I'm celebrating my clearer skin my way. With Sky Rizzi, three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. In another study, most people had 90% clearer skin even at five years. And Sky Rizzi? is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine, or plan to. Thanks to Clear Skin with Sky Rizzi, this is my moment. There's nothing on my skin, and that means everything. Now's the time. Ask your doctor about Sky Rizzi, the number one dermatologist prescribed biologic in psoriasis. Learn how Abvi could help you save. Walmart's amazing holiday deals are happening now. Save big on must-have fashion, top tech, and so much more. Walmart has deals for every gift on their list. You like it, you like it. Ready, set, gift. NetCredit is here to say yes, even when other lenders won't. Apply online in minutes and get funds deposited the next business day or sooner. NetCredit. Credit to the people. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary presented by Pacific Life, creating financial security for more than 100 50 years with Georgetown overcoming the two-point halftime deficit against Notre Dame. I, you know, Ed Cooley was very confident about his group coming in, uh, even without his leading scorer, and uh, their offenses showed up, and, you know, certainly you get a big lift from Mr. Fielder, scoring 13 points, three of four from three, but uh, they've had other guys step up as well, including Masood, who's got one of those Four made three-pointers in the second half for Coach Cooley. Again, Jaden Epps for the second straight game. Not with the team and out with illness. That's a guy who averages 19 points per game, Mike. That is the best of the Big East as far as scoring is concerned. And so Styles is at the free throw line. 78% for the season from the stripe. Styles. On top of the miss from the line, no field goals made in the last two and a half minutes for Georgetown. They do lead by four for the moment. So Marcus Burton had to leave the game a moment ago with his fourth personal foul. Tay Davis on the handle gets it back from Roper. Shrewsbury. Offensive glass, Roper. Foul on the play, and Roper to the free throw line for Notre Dame. And he's another guy, as athletic and active as he is, has only been to the, coming into this game four of eight from the free throw line, Tom. Yeah, not a lot of activity from the free throw line for Roper. And now Burton will come in for Shrewsbury, who just missed that three pointer, but Roper was there to collect the offensive board. Yeah. 
So that and this is that showing miss a by Roper was the first of the game for Notre Dame, although they've only been to the line five times. And there's a correction in the scoring column, Mike, for fouls. We're checking on Burton for fouls. He's right now it says three, three, right? Or, yeah, moved it back. And okay. The, yeah, so. So we, we believe that was a correction from the scorer's table. So Burton with three personal fouls. We're inside of six minutes to go in regulation. Teams haven't played in over a decade after their long-standing rivalry in the Big East. Shot clock down to three. Roper realizes and misses. Masood reaches out for it. Yeah, that was just a, uh, you know, that was a possession that went nowhere. And that was the thing that uh, Micah Shrewsbury was really harping on yesterday was ball movement. Uh, you know, just you know, no standstill, no dribbling, just wanted the ball moving from side to side. How about 29 attempted threes by the Irish? Burton. And again, Georgetown struggles continue two and a half minutes without a field goal. And an opportunity here to tie this ball game for Burton. Davis and Jai are in there fighting for it. And we'll keep it at this end of the floor. Foul on Georgetown. Cook got the foul, Mike, his fourth. And this, this, and this, you know, <laughs> the three ball is a shot that's going to get tougher. These are two teams that are looking very tired at this point in the game, and it's, you know, the, the shot from distance is going to get harder as this game gets along, goes along. Inside pass. Strong move to the basket by Jai. There were two defenders there, and a foul is called. Third foul on Fielder. And that's going to, that's actually, I mean, I talked about, you know, Notre Dame getting those three quick fouls in the first half, and now they're going to be shooting the bonus. They're the first team in the bonus. It was a great catch by Jai on the entry pass. He's a 71% free throw shooter. Again, the Irish shot just one free throw in the first half. It was on a three-point play by Konezny. Sophomore from Centerville, Ohio, Keba Jai, and they both bounce off. Does the, the last two free throw shooters have missed both free throws. Does anybody want to win this game? Notre Dame is trying, despite the misses from Jai, a 6-0 run over the last three minutes and change for the Irish. Georgetown with the basketball and Heath. 440 on the game clock. Fielder. Fielder wants a three. Who knew? 16 points. Great step up game for him. Drew Fielder. Building on his new season high. Burton will cross it over and kick. Konezny behind the line into the corner and Brumbaugh. Fielder had made four three-pointers all season, Mike, before today. After that last one, he's now four or five from three-point distance. Konezny stealing jam. Well, this is what fueled their comeback in the first half. Let's see if they can get active defensively, get some easy baskets. 13 for J.R. Konezny. Four-point game. Brumbaugh got bumped on the drive. And so we'll step aside for just a moment with 3.31 to go in regulation on CW Courtside Saturday. Going down to the wire, Georgetown and Notre Dame. When you're great, your game does the talk. In the ACC, our speech volume. Three of the last eight NCAA championships. 
99 NCAA tournament wins since 2015. Eight NCAA titles in the last 22 years. Six of the top 30 winningest programs in Division I, most of any kind. It's not bragging if it's true. Greatness is what we do. The ACC accomplished greatness. Here's a holiday thought to ponder. Is it truly a wish list if you only have one wish? Here's to getting everything you're hoping for this season. Make your wish list a reality with exceptional offers during the season of Audi. There was a time when the spirit of the season embraced us in its welcoming glow. When wondering eyes widened with enchantment, and with every tinkling bell, another cherished memory was made. There was a time that brought us closer to one another and to our better selves. It was a most wonderful time. It was Christmas, this Christmas, at Biltmore. Hilton for the stay and the way Fielder is playing he might stay in that lineup for Georgetown Mike 16 point leads everybody. Well he came in averaging 15 points a game and time you looked early in the season he had trouble standing on the floor with foul issues but he's cleaned that up a bit he stepped up today in the absence of Epps and uh, see right there four or five from three 16 points and uh, he's probably going to play about 27 28 minutes in this game. Huge coming out party for the freshman from Boise, Idaho. Coming off the bench for Georgetown. Did have a double digit scoring game, game against Coppin State with 11 points. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And you have an opportunity with your leading scorer not playing, you step up and you impress your coach. Certainly what Fielder did today. A couple of free throws from Brumbaugh. He's got nine points now after the free throws. So the lead is six. It's been as high as nine for each team. Konezny will show and go, nowhere to go. Roper in some serious traffic. Fielder felt like he held his ground, Mike. Maintained verticality. He's whistled for the foul. Get an overhead look here. Now, uh, in that early part, his hands were down. So that was, yeah, he he got vertical after the call. So he was correct about that. But at point of contact, he was not. Mesny is out along with Booth. Jai returns. Davis is in there. Roper's at the free throw line. And, I, you know, for a young team and for this crowd, it's a five point game folks <laughs> this is this is uh, this is really doable 10 points for roper mike fifth time this season in double digits for him on air steal from burton rumball fell down styles at the free throw line trying to drop it off out of bounds and it's irish basketball uh just a, a really really iffy pass that time there wasn't a lot of room no margin for error. So Fielder to the bench for Ed Cooley in Georgetown. Five point advantage. Inside of three minutes to go in regulation for Burton. Roper. This is literally one on one. Around Brumball and he lays it in for Roper. He's got the size, he's got the strength. Nice job 
of using the dribble that time and applying some pressure to the freshman. 13 points for Roper at a two-point game. And finally, the crowd wakes up. He tried to shovel it to Cook. It's out of bounds. It was deflected by the Irish. Well, and Jamie Lucky underneath did not see the play. He was blocked out, and uh, Clarence Armstrong picks it up from the weak side. Not quite to the point where they can look at it, but I think it was the correct call. Here's the one on one inside for Roper against Brumbaugh. 13 points for Roper. Keith has it with 10 on the shot clock. Stop and start from Heath. Course correction, tipped by Cook. Couldn't get it. Davis pulls it down. Two point game. Cook probably should have come down with that and gone back up. It just was a tough tip. Two minutes to go in regulation. Burton scrapes the ceiling with the jumper, and the ball ends up in the hands of Brumball. Masood did a nice job of keeping Burton in front of him and getting pressure on the shot. Three Hoyas getting the double digits and scoring. They turn it over, Burton. Nice steal by Burton. Three on two to Davis for the jam. Tied at 60 and a timeout on the court. Marcus Burton with a winning defensive play. Great defensive way, way to open up, and then the decision on this end of the floor. They've been terrific in the open. It's been their defense has been their best plays of the day, Tom. Notre Dame has fought back to tie us up for the third time in the game. A 6-0 run punctuated by the jam. And it's been Julian Roper who is the one who's been uh, igniting the crowd. Well, Roper put on a trick shot show in the first half. And we've seen more conventional baskets from the Irish in the second half to tie us at 60. It's getting warm in the building now, Mike. Things are heating up. The Big East and the ACC head to head. Well, you know, it was funny that Ed Cooley was the one who called Micah Shrewsbury and said, yeah, hey, you know what? I, I need a game. We're kind of in the same place. We're rebuilding. You know, let's play. And, and Michael was like, yeah, sure. That sounds good. You let's know, we, we've got two programs that have incredible, incredible histories. And, uh, it, you know, this, this is a great, this is a great game. Coach Cooley last year at Penn State made the Big Ten Tournament Finals. Got him to the tournament, NCAA tournament for the first time since 2011 for Coach Shrewsbury. And sitting to his right, ACC fans might remember Jeff Battle, who was uh, Skip Prosser's right-hand man for years at Wake Forest. <laughs> Tied at 60, Georgetown with the basketball. Over two minutes now without a field goal. Running some clock down. They must feel like they can get to the rim if they need to. Shot clock is at eight. Supreme Cook around the defender. Second move. Missed the shot. Roper came in to snatch it out of the air. Forty-five seconds to go in regulation. Here's, this has been the guy, Roper. Lost the handle to Heath, and then he fouled him. Tried the one-on-one -on -one action against Brumbaugh, who defended it well, Mike. It's just the first on Roper. Yeah, and it looked like he just he dribbled off his foot. I mean, Brumbaugh was, you know, earlier on, a couple minutes ago, that... Uh, 
Roper won that one-on-one -on -one battle off the dribble, but he did, Brumbaugh did a better job of uh, defending him. Heath had been six of six from the free throw line. First miss tonight. We've had bunch of, we've had three late misses by Georgetown from the free throw line. So Roper has two personal fouls. Correction on that. Timeout is called. Irish with one remaining. Georgetown with two. And so we're tied at 60. And at one point, Mike, in this second half, it appeared that Georgetown, because of its three-point shooting, especially mm -hmm. early on in the half, might create a little distance. But the Irish fighting back, and a lot of it coming from the defensive end. Okay, thing to remember here, for George, you got 6.8 seconds between shot and game clock, so there is a little room for Georgetown. Now, for Notre Dame, I think you can't, you absolutely can't settle for a jump shot here. You've got to get something attacking the rim, put some pressure on the referees to make a call. You know, if you're just, you're just really playing into Georgetown's hands if you settle for a jump shot. Try to get something inside now they've tried to go one-on-one -on -one with Roper against Brumbaugh and it's a 50 50 proposition right now but that's been him backing down if you can get something going straight ahead to the rim you know that's the play to me first year head coach Micah Shrewsbury in the middle of that huddle and trying to outlast the Georgetown Hoyas you know, maybe you get something, you get a you get a situation where you give Burton the ball, get him a screen, give him some room in the middle of the floor, and get him into the paint, break people down. Series history overall has been close. Georgetown leads at 16-13 as they meet for the 30th time, and it's a classic chapter of this rivalry, which we documented that timeline between the teams that goes all the way back to 1948. Roper on the inbounds. Davis. Five points in the game for Davis. Shot clock goes inside of 10. Burton driving by Masood. Up and under, and he spun it off the glass to give Notre Dame the two-point lead. 8.7 seconds on the clock and a timeout. Well, if you were wondering if Marcus Burton can finish off games, I think you're starting to get the answer to that. What a big time finish inside. Uses body, uses the rim, goes up underneath. Makes a defensive play on one end of the floor and then finish there. 11 points, three rebounds, four assists. Yeah, but it, you know what? Those aren't eye-popping numbers, but it's when he's made the plays. Last two minutes of the game. Life is all about timing, G-Man. Yeah. And you saw the two guys that he beat on the play. Those are some big guys, Masood and Cook. Okay, here's, here's the thing. Now, for me, you know, my let's see what Ed Cooley draws up here. But for me, on the road, especially with this team, I'm going for a win. You know, I'm going for the three-point shot here. They've shot it pretty well, Mike. Eight of 19 for Georgetown. Yep. 42% from three-point distance. Fielder is four or five on threes as well. Brumbaugh's got the ball. Driving, they're looking for two, and they got it from Brumbaugh. Wow. Makes sense. Fielder on the bench at this time. So Brumbaugh driving to the rim and scoring. Okay, he went. He to, ties it. Well, and you know, and he went. Arguably, could have gotten the call on that. So one second left. Enough for catch and shoot. He went right for the body. No, well, he did a nice job that time. Keeping vertical, good no call, good finish. It's a tough shot, off yeah, balance. Very tough shot. Contact right into Jai. 
Jai held his ground. Brumbaugh hit the shot. I mean, everybody did everything right there, and it turned into a tie game at 62 with one second left. They have the time for the catch and shoot, as you mentioned. Mike. But if you're the only thing, the only thing, if you're if you're Georgetown, you can't allow anything a catch going toward Notre Dame's basket. So they added a couple of tents as well, Mike. Now you've got the shortest guy on the floor taking the ball out of bounds and the tallest guy on the floor, Matumbo, guarding it. Now the pass over. Zona. Burton heaves it. Oh, oh hit the rim. Wow. Pre-quarter court. It's Georgetown beat American University in late November, 88-83 in OT. And a game against Oklahoma State was an OT win, 66-64 for Notre Dame. So here we go with overtime CW courtside Saturday. Can you believe this? And late in that first second half, I thought Georgetown gave away some points at the free throw line. Neither team shot it well down the stretch from the line. Georgetown 14 of 19 in free throws, 6 of 9 from the stripe Notre Dame. Georgetown had built a nine-point lead, Mike relatively early in that second half and could not make it stand up. Shot clock at 10, Brumball. Lot of dribbling. Styles stumbles. Diving for the loose ball is Burton. Shoveled ahead, Cook got it. Uh, and they, what they did, the, the score, the timer recycled the shot clock and they shouldn't have because Notre Dame never got possession. So now there's a discussion going on. Yeah, it did not look like. That was Davis who was fumbling forward after Burton dove after it, never grabbed it. So they're going to review it. It didn't, yeah, I, I don't, it didn't look like anybody really came up with the basketball until after, it was, you know, they, as soon as Notre Dame touched it, they turned on the, sh they flipped it to 30 seconds. So Jamie Lucky and James Breeding are at the scorer's table, taking a look at it. So that's Styles who stumbles down, and then Burton comes out of nowhere. So they flip it right there, and nobody really has it. So that should have been an, it should have been a shot clock vial. It's probably going to be Notre Dame's ball. Can you make a case that Burton, because he was able to make that pass, yeah. may have had possession? I mean, it was a fantastic hustle play, no question about it. But mm -hmm. did he have enough control to make that pass? Was he as he was looking for Davis? Might be. Yeah. What they're taking a closer look at. And you know, it's interesting, Mike, you made the comment that both of the teams looked a little bit sluggish I midway thought, through the second half. They picked it up late in that second half. Yeah, I thought I thought there was a stretch in about the 10-minute mark. But, you know, as from the 10-minute mark on, let's take a look at this again. Here. Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know that anybody really. To me, I don't know that anybody really has possession of that. It, it's kind of fumbled around. But I don't have a striped shirt on. You had that great looking yeah, quarter CW. Of CW Sports. Yeah, I love yeah. it. But um, no, to your point, you know, toward the end of the game, to. It's, you know, you're getting more timeouts. You, there is more chance. It seems to me uh, there's more chance to rest. Okay, they are, they are going to say that uh, they're George, or that Notre Dame did possess the ball right there, and it's going to be 28 seconds on the shot clock. It's going to be Georgetown's ball. So we've sorted that out in overtime again. Second OT game for both teams, and they won their OT games earlier this season.
Keith has to back it out. Ten on the shot clock. Styles wastes no time and hits the three in front of his own bench. He's shown me a lot. Uh, his ability to put the ball on the floor, but uh, catch and shoot really didn't uh, hesitate at all on that play. Reliable scorer Styles. Ten points in the game, eighth time this season. To double digits in scoring for Dontrez Styles. He had a streak in this year of 20 point games, three in a row. And all, I'll tell you, you know, he, he was, he could not find the basket. He had an early three and then really went through a stretch where he couldn't score. But uh, Marcus Burton has shown up in this game. 13 points in total for Burton. He gave the Irish a late lead with about eight seconds to go. And then Brumbaugh drove it down the other end of the floor and scored a bucket with a second left. That's Heath off balance. Burton grabs it. One point Georgetown lead. Styles made a three and OT. Burton. Masood. Fell back. Burton had a chance at a wide open shot. Well, and Masood's given him about a five or six foot cushion guarding him. Brumbaugh dribbled into trouble. Tried to turn around and get to the rim. That is a foul against Notre Dame. Fourth on Burton now. Well, and you know, now if you're if you're Micah Shrewsbury, do you go offense for defense with your point guard here? You know, you leave him in for this possession offensively, but then do you take him out on the defensive side of the ball? And I saw they made eye contact, and I saw Micah Shrewsbury point to his head and said, be smart. You know, you got... But this is this is part of the learning process for for a freshman player. You know, learn how to play with four four fouls. Thirteen points now for Brumbaugh. He's made all of his free throw attempts four for four. Jai trying to direct a little bit of traffic. Capable hands of Marcus Burton driving. Burton Ooh. scores it. Kept it behind his right ear and then laid it off the glass. I didn't know how he was going to get that up on the backboard. Acrobatic shot. Brumbaugh straight away front rim. Tired legs on that shot. Soaring rebound for Tate Davis. Inside of two minutes to go in overtime. Georgetown by one. The rivalry renewed in a big way. Big East and ACC deep into the shot clock for Burton for Notre Dame. Trying to get around Masood. He bumped him. All I saw was from our angle were, were Georgetown uniforms, and then this ball comes out of nowhere <laughs> and goes through the net. We've seen a lot of shots involving yep. high degree of difficulty this afternoon. I mean, the bucket that he made, Mike, to put Notre Dame up by two late in the game was acrobatic. Big make, one on one, so make the front end there. Next foul will be the double bonus. So Burton gives Notre Dame the one point lead, 17 points. And a big OT period for Burton. He's done this before. Had six of the 11 points in the OT period and the OT win against Oklahoma State. 120 on the game clock. Inside of 10 on the shot clock. Masood for three. Raining it in for the Hoyas. And he's been a mystery to me. He's thrown up some air balls, and then he has thrown up some of the purest shots that I've seen. Masood with 13 points. It's a two-point Georgetown lead. What a basketball game between these two programs. They have put on an absolute show for us on CW Courtside Saturday. Burton got the defender in the air. Masood 
Those two players have been going at it here in OT. Here's the look. I mean, this is this is just a great stroke. He didn't hesitate at all. But but what I like about that last possession, where I talked about Masood was giving him that buffer fiber, but Burt didn't accept it. He, you know, he went in, he took the distance up, gave him the little hesitation, got him up in the air, and got to the free throw line. First miss from the line for Burton. And a timeout. Masood, by the way, is now three of six on three pointers. He just gave Georgetown a two point lead, 70 68, here in overtime. So the Irish into OT with Georgetown. Mike, I know you love these old school rivalry type games. And what a chapter they've added to this rivalry in their 30th all time meeting. Yeah, you know, I just, I'm, I'm a traditionalist. You know, I, I didn't, uh, we just saw Pitt Syracuse, even though now it's, you know, it's in conference. and uh, But still, I mean, uh, you know, we, you know, Syracuse is playing, still plays Georgetown and some of those old school things. You know, it's, it's good to keep up. I, you know, I love it. Syracuse and Georgetown played on December 9th. The loss at home for Georgetown against the Orange 80 68 in their 99th all time meeting. But who's keeping track? Burton at the free throw line for Notre Dame. Missed the first. Oh, he missed two there, Mike. And a tired, tired missed on the front end. He's got all six of the Notre Dame points here in OT. And we're down to 35 seconds on the game clock. Now the thing, the thing of Notre Dame, you've got to get the rebound here. You're going to Georgetown's going to run clock, but if you make a miss, can't give up an offensive rebound. Shot clock is at five. Brumbaugh, he tied this game at the end of regulation. A spinning shot comes off the rim, and Roper secures the board. 12 seconds to go. Down by two for the Irish. Uh, timeout. And that is the final timeout for Notre Dame with nine seconds even on the clock. For Micah Shrewsbury and the Fighting Irish against Georgetown. We were tied at 62 at the end of regulation. Thanks to Burton on one end and Brumbaugh on the other. See now you, you got you got your point guard. You got your point guard with four fouls. Now if you got your point guard with four fouls. Do you um, you know do you go and do you try for the tie here, or do you, do you think you have enough gas in the tank to go into another overtime, or do you go for the win? I mean, that move by Burton at the end of the first half, a second half rather. Yeah, I mean, to put Notre Dame up by two. Yeah, but this, is, you know, the decision here is: do you try to get the th a three the old-fashioned way, or do you go just go for the outright win? Another stellar OT performance by the freshman Marcus Burton. Did it against Oklahoma State as well. That was in the Legends Classic in Brooklyn, New York. Here comes Burton, six seconds on the clock. Driving the lane, has to kick. This for the win. It's deflected. The shot deflected by Cook. And there's only .4 on the clock. It was Jai with the shot. Cook challenged and got a piece. A block three. Wow. Supreme Cook on the closeout. Took a chance on going, on timing it, and got a piece. Clean block. Look at the elevation. You would think, Mike, for Notre Dame, that had to be option B when Burton could not get yeah. to the rim. Look at Jai's numbers on the year. Just 104 in three-point attempts, and he'd attempted one in this game and missed it. And so Brumball with a chance to put it out of reach. 0.4 seconds, which is enough time for a catch and shoot. You need 0.3. But if Brumball makes this, it in all likelihood is academic. And 
And the big, without their best player, and they had different guys step up. Epps was out with illness. Brumbaugh finishes with 15 points. Fielder leads the way for the Hoyas with 16.